asasura nsa nana apata kofi nsa akosum edoso eso nsa nana numa we wa ko o ma jinsa no ishi aha na ya to nsa from one in the anope or ya some dead the wa nana no munyim de obesi in the Oye yanka sa yen de shi Mr. Kodu yanka Ah Nemba ya memba be yin Aka fadam ejuma suni Ozaba krumha Oma jen sanom Ya from wana Ya sem titi ya inde Deme jume ya Inde Ya di asor bo bo fomi Asor bo di bo fomi de piya Nsubi nye ejuma Nadama soya inde oman peyi na lankasa wetu tina na mo na na numa yufu peyi yufu eti til awoho a wufre chichu wa bay na na numi ya zawa na dadam a soya yezu ba bufumi a yende jume piara jume zip piara ya shire bayano mombre ma piara nsanka no kaba inde. Mbibi ya ibeji na hano, damaza ya sheno, kwa mbado. Iwe ni damaa, oma mpeyini mkwa do. Nana nungu wa mkwa do. Upia, oba buwa de meji mebiya hano mkwa do. MP sa waba, minister sa waba wa mkwa do. Oma jinsano, no wambuwa, ni bibi ya mkwa do. Otafwa kwa nsembi ya wabaya na agunde, wabaya bibi ya tia no. Mwenye na mdumu wasa. We may remain seated or in whatever posture we find ourselves, but commit ourselves and attention to the presence of the Almighty Allah. We pray in the name of Allah, most gracious, ever merciful, Almighty Lord, we thank you for this day and occasion. We glorify your name and sing your praises just as we extol your beauties. We pray you empower us, understand, appreciate, and hold high aloft our heritage, our values, and identity, such that we give meaning to it, even as we recognize your glorious face through these values. Almighty Allah, we thank you for this beautiful, impacting occasion in which we cut sword for such an ambitious and grandiose state of the art Pan-African Heritage Museum, which we dedicate to your glory. We pray and pray you, enable us to become true embodiments of our culture and uh, as Africans. Embodiments of our culture as Africans such that we do not only share the traditions and cultural values of our forebears, but also cherish it and dutifully pass it on to subsequent generations in a sustained order. Gracious Lord, we pray you to reward initiators of this noble and laudable project. Reward them handsomely. Grant them more wisdom, protection, and all that it takes to carry on and move these laudable ideas into fruition within the shortest 
possible time. Merciful and compassionate Allah, we commit our president unto your arms, your loving arms. Protect him and bless him. And bless all his efforts, and indeed the efforts of all his lieutenants as they move this dear land of our birth forward to where we invariably belong in the community of nations. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in, Ihdina Sirat wal Mustaqim, Sirat wa Allazina An'amta Alayhim, Ghayr al Ma'lubi Alayhim, Waladhalim. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Mulvey. Please welcome the chairperson of the advisory board, Professor Kofi Asari Opoku, for the proverbial Akwaaba. Welcome, Madrid. Let's show some love. This young man was 88 years a couple of days ago. His Excellency, the eminently honorable President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Ado Dankwa Kufu Ado, the far-sighted and august patron of the Pan-African Heritage World Museum, honorable ministers, of this of state, Nananum Nime Kename, members of the diplomatic corps, as well as friends and supporters of this museum who live abroad but have come here specifically to witness this ceremony. on behalf of our ancestors, upon whose shoulders we stand today, and on behalf of the board of advisors to this museum, I cordially welcome all of you to this important ceremony of the cutting of the sword of the Pan-African Heritage World Museum. The monumental enterprise of the Pan-African Heritage World Museum irrepressibly envisioned by Honorable Kojoyanka an indefatigable and ingeniously resourceful son of Africa is going to be the place where Africans, both on the continent and elsewhere in the diaspora, tell their own story themselves. Our ancestors said, until the lions have the historians, tales of hunting will always glorify the hunter. This museum will represent the lion's tale, not the hunter's tale. So many deliberate misrepresentations and outright falsehoods have been told about Africa, her people, 
and her history. But I take unrestrained comfort in our ancestral wisdom that says, whereas the liar takes 1,000 years to go on a journey, the one who speaks the truth follows and overtakes the liar in a day. Centuries of distortions made many people feel that the truth about Africa had disappeared. But our ancestors firmly believed that the truth that went out in the morning came back in the evening. This museum is going to represent our truth as told by ourselves. For when the gigantic curtain of the enthralling human drama was flung wide open, Africans were the only actors on that great stage. And for centuries, they made lasting contributions that made a future world for humanity possible. This museum will restore our truth, our genius, our dignity, and our greatness as a people. And it will be a site where inspiration, hope, knowledge, and a sense of renewal will be mined for the benefit of all of us African descendants. Again, a hearty and gracious welcome to this memorable ceremony, bearing in mind that this museum will be built not because we are Africans, but as Osage Fukwami Nkuma said, this museum will be built because Africa was born in us. Memamakwaba. Thank you. Yaje wusuo openi. Yaje wusuo. It is an honor to introduce an astute man who has served his country in various capacities. His kingdom is famous for being one of the neatest communities in Ghana. He has chaired numerous boards in the past and present. He is a former presidential advisor. He chairs the Committee for Mobus Property Development, Ghana Cement Foundation, the University of Cape Coast, the Sam Jonah Endowment Fund, and the Cape Coast Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome Nana Ehuna Bobrum, Pra Ajin Sem the Sixth, Oman Hine of Asin Renchi in the Kushia traditional area. He's also known in private life as Nana Dr. Wellington Eshon Jonah. Nana. Your Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufu Ado, President of the Republic of Ghana. The Chairman of the Advisory Board, Professor Kofi Poku, and members of the Advisory Board. Nana President 
Central Regional House of Chiefs and Queen Mothers, Regional Minister, members of Diplomatic Corps, and Honorable Koyo Nyanka. I welcome the honor of chairing this function when the invitation came to me for a number of reasons. But principally, it was out of excitement for the sheer vision behind this project. I have, in my time, traveled uh, not too much, but reasonably well throughout the whole world, but have not seen any project that gives so much prominence to the past, present, and future of people of African descent. I am very elated. Going through the profile of the press of the project as elaborated by the chairman of the advisory committee, Professor Kofi Poku, my mind went to a patriotic song composer by the name late famous Ifram Amo. And the song was entitled Yanum Ebibrime. He was calling fellow Africans of descent, calling on us to wake up and act because he felt the rest of the world was leaving us behind. That was in the early 1930s. Ephraim Mamou feared that our African personality and dignity would be eroded if we did not take immediate action. As a traditional ruler, I can see a wake-up call in this project. Our rich values and cultural heritage are giving way to other people's cultures. As head of a community myself, I see that apart from the education and enlightenment this project is going to give to the whole world. Jobs and other opportunities are going to open up for the immediate and distant communities of our good country, Ghana. I can foresee this whole area transformed as a major tourism destination for all Africa generating huge revenue to the national purse. I am delighted to be part of this epoch-making event, and I wholeheartedly accept to be chairman for the sword cutting for the start of the construction of the Pan-African Heritage World Museum. I thank you for your attention. Nana yada se wanumu. We'll now have brief goodwill messages. And the first person on our list is our sister, our central regional minister, Honorable Justina Hassan. Nana Chairman, Your Excellency, Nana Adudankwa Kufuado, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Nom, Ministers of State present, MPs present, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Metropolitan, Municipal, and District Chief Executives, our friends from the media, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm highly honored to be part of this important occasion, marking the short cutting ceremony for the construction of a 30 million US dollars US dollar world class museum at Pomazi Hills here in the central region. Nana Chairman, before I proceed, permit me to acknowledge and extend a special warm welcome to His Excellency Nana Dankwa Akufuadu for making time off his busy schedule to honor our invitation to this region and to mark this historic occasion. Mr. President, we are indeed proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm reliably informed that this project, which by design is to be completed by the end of 2023, is expected to be the first of its kind in Africa and possibly the whole world, and that it is also the brainchild of our own Honorable Professor Kojo Yanka, former Central Regional Minister in the late 1990s, and now the Executive Chairman of Pan-African Heritage World. It is also gratifying. It is also gratifying to note that the project has received endorsement from the African Commission, Association of African Universities, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and the Government of Ghana. The museum, which location now is called Africa Hills, will upon completion occupy 10 acres out of the 75 acre piece of land, which belongs to the African University College of Communications and lies between Ghana's capital city of Accra and Cape Coast, the colonial capital of the then Gold Coast, and for that matter, the capital town of the hub of tourism in our dear country. Nana Chairman, more so upon completion, this four-story museum, I'm informed, will situate next to a garden of sculptures of Africa origin, and will house various inventions, exhibition of arts, culture, and science of Africa, as well as innovation and gallery relative to the African diaspora and African entrepreneurs, leaders, writers, and scholars, and palaces of African kingdoms. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no gain saying that the fact is a project that will be a form of a tremendous benefit to the people of the central region. This is in consideration of the fact that, apart from the tourism and related activities that will help generate income for the people, more jobs will also be created even before the project is completed. Suffice to say that many artisans, especially those around the catchment areas, will be employed for the project's construction. In addition to the direct skill jobs, opportunities will also be provided for those engaged in catering and related services whilst the working is ongoing. Moreover, the ongoing tree planting exercise is expected to cover the whole of this area where the facility will be situated and it is anticipated that a serene environment will be created to preserve the ecosystem and also to provide a cozy environment to encourage patronage by tourists, business people, investors, and all manner of people would like interest. Nana Chairman, it is interesting to note that a wide range of infrastructure and facilities, including chattels, hotels, and conducive conference facilities will form part of the architecture on these hills. In addition to that, a wide range of medicinal plants will be cultivated in this area as part of the project to preserve African herbal medicine. We indeed acknowledge with admiration the frantic efforts being made by Mr. President Nana Adodankwa Kufuado and his government to, prove, to improve and promote tourism and also uphold and 
sustained the cultural heritage of our region in particular, and that of the nation as a whole. This project resonates with the Year of Return initiative by the government to encourage our brothers and sisters from the diaspora to come home to Africa, especially Ghana, to settle and invest in the continent. It further runs to consonance with beyond the return pillars of creating the enabling environment for the rest of the world to experience Ghana, promote Pan-African heritage and innovation, invest in Ghana, create a diaspora pathway to Ghana, give back to Ghana, celebrate Ghana, and brand Ghana. We heartily commend the government and the Pan-African Heritage World for extending this kind of support to the central region. We are indeed privileged and wish to use this opportunity to encourage investors, businessmen, entrepreneurs, and other potential tourists to embrace this project, not only to transform the lives of the people living in Pomazi and its environs, but also the central region in general and Ghana as a whole. It is our ardent hope and fervent prayer that all stakeholders in the construction of this project will put their shoulders to the wheel to ensure that it is completed to scale though, to serve the desired purpose for which it is designed. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. We'll now call on the UNESCO rep in Ghana, Mr. Abdurrahman Diallo, to also give us an address. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Chair, Honorable Minister of Tourism, Art and Culture, Honorable Kojo Yanka, Executive Chairman of the Pan-African African Heritage Museum, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and privilege for me, representative of the educational, scientific, and cultural organization, to attend this sword cutting ceremony of the Pan African Heritage World Museum. And I would like to begin by extending my heartfelt congratulations to Honorable Kojo Yanka and all others involved for pioneering this historical moment. I would like also to recognize that the presence of your excellency, Mr. President, demonstrates the great importance your excellency attached to this monumental heritage museum project, as well as Ghana's film's position at the forefront of the Pan-Africanist agenda. As African Union's member states are celebrating this year, 2021, arts, culture, and heritage. This ceremony is of particular importance as we are also celebrating today African World Heritage Day. Museums, museums are more than places where objects are exhibited and conserved along with the dramatic rise in cultural tourism in recent decades, the number of museums around the world has increased from 22,000 in 1975 to 95,000 today. Unfortunately, in Africa, we have less than 1,000 museums. UNESCO supports developing countries using museums' potential to foster social cohesion, notably among local communities and disadvantaged groups. 
UNESCO intervenes to secure and rehabilitate museums. UNESCO also carries out capacity building for museum specialists in the conservation of collection and inventorying and documentation to contribute to the fight against illicit traffic of cultural objects. By housing the history, culture, arts, sciences of Africa, Pan-African Heritage World Museum will serve as a reminder of the rich and diverse shared heritage of African people in the continent and across the diaspora. While the fort and castles, components of the listed UNESCO World Heritage Site, just a few kilometers away, represent the emotive chapter of humanity of European African encounters and the starting point of the African diaspora, the Pan-African Heritage World Museum will add the missing pages to the world history books and share the multifaceted stories of the mighty heroes and civilizations of Africa with the world. It will allow us, especially our youth, to learn about and honor our past as well as remedy the general ignorance on Africa's history. It is to be reminded that in 1964, UNESCO was uh, embarked in, the mon in a monumental project, General History of Africa, in support of the then newly independent African countries' willingness to take back ownership over the narration of their history and reaffirmation of their cultural identity to reinforce the common aspiration to achieve African unity. The tireless work continues, backed, of course, by African Union. And this month, UNESCO will organize conference with the objective to promote the integration of the project's pedagogical materials into national curricula in several African countries, including Ghana. Moreover, it is commendable that the museum has the ambition to showcase artifacts that were looted and illegally removed from Africa, particularly during the colonial era. The thousands of artifacts in question have become the subject of a decades-long debate on the return and restitution of cultural and historical property to their countries of origin in Africa. This year, UNESCO is supporting African member states through capacity building to implement the 1970 Convention on the means of prohibiting and preventing the illicit import, export, and transfer of ownership of cultural property. In this regard, the documentary, You Hide Me, produced by Ni Kwate Ou, who is present today, shows some of these artifacts in the British Museum. This documentary is of particular interest. Considering this, its dedication to this issue, I'm confident that the Pan-African African Heritage World Museum will be a key actor in this effort and will voice Ghana's voice position on this important issue. I'm also delighted to know that the museum will allow a space for an African herbal plant village and another for concert, festival, film screening, exhibition, and other forms of entertainment because culture heritage is not limited to monuments and collection of objects. It also includes traditions of living, expression, and one cannot tell the story of who we are, as Africans, without music, dance, fashion, drama, traditional medicine, and other expressions that have been used in the continent for generations to educate and entertain people. 
the intangible cultural heritage plays a crucial role to pass on knowledge, social values, and collective memory, and ultimately keep African cultures alive. And I applaud the Pan-African Heritage World Museum, Museum for Creating Spaces for this heritage to flourish. As we all know, today is African World Heritage Day, celebrated every May the 5th. This day is an opportunity for all, uh, all of us around the world to celebrate the African continent, unique culture and natural heritage. It is the opportunity to remind that Ghana hosts two of these prestigious heritage sites, namely the Fort and Castle, Volta in, in the greater Accra central and western region, and the Asante traditional buildings. We have also six sites that have been identified under the tentative list with the potential to be listed. I cannot think of a better way to commemorate the day than to be here with you and not only celebrate the richness of our heritage, but also vote to safeguard it for future generations. I'm certain I will leave this ceremony with renewed inspiration to continue telling the African stories. Before I do so, I would like to thank you again for granting UNESCO the opportunity to once again express its utmost support to this initiative, and I look forward to being back here again with you all in the end of 2023 for the official grand opening of the doors to this museum. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Diallo. Um, I didn't know I speak French. I'm following after our president. Yes, thank you. Um, I will now call on Mr. Julian Adumakujima, the author of Smile Africa, to also give us a goodwill message. Thank you. His Excellency Nana Adudan Kwaikufuado, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Ministers of State, Nananom, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Today marks a new dawn in the history of Africa and Pan-Africanism. Europeans have told our story. Americans have told our story. We have never had the chance to tell our own story. But today, this event gives Africans and black people around the world the chance to tell our own story. Uhuru, Africa. Most African nations have political emancipation, but not economic or spiritual emancipation, therefore making it very difficult for us to carve our own path. The Western world obviously stole a lot of our gold, and today they give it back to us as loans via the IMF. Some 16 years ago, I met Honorable Kujoyanka for the first time when I flew into Ghana to partake in the Panafrest event. I could see his enthusiasm to lead a paradigm shift in the economic emancipation of the black race. And today, I'm not surprised at what I'm witnessing today. Nkrumah was right when he said that we prefer self-government in danger to servitude in tranquility. And I plead with President Ekufuado to see through his Ghana without aid agenda as that will liberate our people economically. I can see the Zion train coming home in honor of Marcos Mozayagavi today. Martin Luther King, in his famous speech, I Have a Dream, reiterated his desire to see his children judged on the basis of their competence and not on the basis of their color. And this is a good step in realizing that dream. We need to tell the world our own story. It is a fact that the richest man to ever walk on earth was a black man called Mansa Musa. And it's also a fact that the first heart surgery was carried out by Neil Hill Williams, the son of a barber and a black man in 1893. Telling our own stories will allow us to correct the miseducation we see in our schools and colleges and help create visions that are devoid of superstitions. It will help our youth to move away from their inability to learn, unlearn, and relearn 
as Alvin Toffler described today's illiteracy. It is for all these reasons that Benka Ashap, a door manufacturing company I partly own in Kaisari, Turkey, decided to donate all the doors for this museum project, as this museum will reverse the miseducation of the black populace. Our factory is located next to the biblical Cappadocia in Turkey, and we believe this action will make it possible for all our fallen heroes to rest in peace, knowing that in the helm of President Anadu Ekufuado and with his support, Kujo Yanka and his team, made this long-standing dream of telling our story a reality. So much to do, so little done. As your sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah said, Baluta continua, and this is just the beginning. May God bless Mama Africa, and may he be with us all. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is an African saying that a song is best sung from the mouth of the composer. I now invite the founder and executive chair to share his vision and rationale behind the museum. Honorable Kojo Yanka. Thank you very much. Akuswa Abd Abdallah, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Let me adjust uh, my technology. <laughs> Nana Chairman, Your Excellency, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, Nana Anum, Nana Central Regional Chairman of House of Chiefs, Honorable Ministers, Members of Parliament, Members of Diplomatic Corps, Invited Guests, I think I can call the rest ladies and gentlemen, Almost a year ago, in September of last year, 2020, an idea which has been nurtured over a decade saw the light at a global virtual launch that was witnessed by over 3,000 people across the world via internet. Thanks to His Excellency, the President of Ghana, who addressed the occasion, expressed his support, and invited his colleagues and the peers on, in the African community to rally behind it. I'm happy to report that since then, I've been invited to over 100 radio and television stations and more than 50 Zoom meetings throughout the world to talk about the Pan-African Heritage World Museum. The enthusiastic response to this project is immeasurable and it assures me and my colleagues on the team that there could not be a better time. Thank you Julian for donating all the doors to the museum. I checked with the architect and he says with all the doors taken we have 50% of the work done. Thank you Julian once again. Your Excellency the President Ladies and gentlemen, we chose this day declared by UNESCO as Africa World Heritage Day for this ceremony, deliberately to emphasize the importance we give to the mission we have started. We people of African descent have been separated for far too long. Our civilization was trampled upon and deliberately destroyed. Our legacy was stolen and our self-confidence dimmed by paralyzing accounts of our past and even our present. And that is why we are fond of dis disregarding the wise sayings and indigenous knowledge of our own people and quote eloquently from sources alien to us for our daily living. We call our traditions and practices fetish, 
and savage and we see ourselves as condemned and cursed as if we were not created in God's image. It is no secret that we people of African descent do not know ourselves. We do not trust each other and we sometimes hesitate even to call each other my brother, my sister. At other times, we simply hate each other. We who were separated and robbed of our wealth and dignity during the period of slavery, and later at just one meeting in 1884 in Germany, now see ourselves as competitors and rivals. The period of going at each other's throats and forgetting that we are the same people with one heritage. Artificial borders have divided us so badly that even our media perpetuate that hatred for one another. And worst of all, miseducation on both sides of the Atlantic has blinded us to the beauty of our common heritage as one people with a common destiny. Our Ubuntu, our Umoja, our togetherness, principles of living have disappeared. The Pan-African Heritage World Museum, which we are creating, aims to bridge the gap that has widened for over 400 years. We seek to create a Pan-African heritage city in this environment to teach, to heal, and to inspire. We have the best museologists and scholars on our academic council from all corners of the Pan-African world which council is authenticating the history, the arts, and the culture that we all share in our galleries. We have the best museologists. We have the first cur best curators on our curatorial board who are building our digital museum, as I'm speaking, ahead of the physical one that we will commission in 2023. We boast of competent herbal plant scientists in Africa and in the diaspora who are currently selecting 10,000 species from across the Pan-African world to nurture in our herbal plant village in our museum complex. On another level, we have a two-acre plot where we will replicate a selected number of African kingdoms, ancient and modern, and showcase their history, their art, their culture, and learn from their skills, craftsmanship, and indigenous knowledge, which have sustained us till today. Mr. President, sometimes we talk about alternative medicine. I get worried. Our primary medicine is our herbal plant medicine. The WHO recognizes that 70% of Africans live on herbal plants. So how come our herbal plants become the alternative medicine? That should be our primary medicine. And we are going to give a lot of prominence to it in our museum complex. We are also going to have a location for African cuisines to draw our appetite for variety of African dishes. So you can have a Nigerian breakfast, Ethiopian lunch, and a Caribbean dinner, all up here. Your Excellencies, we are creating, in addition, a central park for concerts, 
festivals, and games. We should celebrate our strength and prowess in entertainment, sports, and festivals, events that will bring all of us together to learn and inspire each other. On the One Acre Heroes Park, we have a committee, Listen Our Past Heroes and Heroines, who are hidden from history. Not just for political leaders, but achievers in arts, science, technology, sports, entertainment, and literature. Now, looking up to the future, our youth will enjoy our single parts, every single part of this museum complex. But most of all, our innovation and creativity hub will be where, after going around the entire city, they will have the opportunity to build on new ideas for the future. Accommodation is going to be provided in this city, along with our university. And we are not only going to have a herbal plant village, but we will have places for learning. So African University College of Communications is going to live side by side with this museum. And by the way, our city is going to be a green city, relying more on renewable energy. And we are going to treat our own waste for energy and help the whole environment to benefit from it. Definitely, we will need more than the $30 million that was originally estimated. And our project consultants now tell us that the project is going to cost 50 million US dollars. We are not scared because we know that the people of the Pan-African world, supported by the Ghana government and its president, will make it possible. <laughs> Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, and the chairman, I stand here to thank my dedicated International Board of Trustees, the Academic Council, the Curatorial Board, and the Executive Council, all of who bought into my vision and have brought our international NGO this far. I wish to thank the architect, George Rekubrobi of Ghana, who originally did the concept, but more particularly, James Inedu George of Nigeria, whose designs are now the talk of town, you can see at the end of this show. If George, you are around, can you rise to show you were expected to land this morning from Nigeria? Sorry, James, if you are not here, we'll introduce you another time. I wanted the president to see you physically. I must appreciate Rap artist Ochiami Kwame, if he's here, who is spreading the message on the project and has offered two concerts to raise funds for this project before the end of this year. <laughs> Similarly, my love to a young Gambian, Usman Toure, who is our youth ambassador and is uh, sharing, sharing our message on his social media platforms and elsewhere. And thank you, most graciously, Brother Julian Aduma Kujima, for your incredibly astounding support to our museum's construction. Finally, Nana Chairman, I'd like to assure the people of Ghana and all other regions of Africa, including the diaspora, that this is a project for the entire world dedicated especially to the youth. We believe that everyone needs to unlearn and relearn from stories written by people of African descent, which will be exhibited here. I'm seeing in my mind's eye new songs, new compositions, new films, new books, new inventions, and new architects coming out of this modest contribution to world civilization. 
should the self-confidence of the average ordinary African child be raised for the future as a result of the living experience we are creating here, the expectations of myself and my business team would have been met. As we say and share with you, it is only our own story that can shape our future. Because for how long shall we live in borrowed ropes? I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Kojo Yanka. I now call on the dynamic, business-oriented Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Honorable Dr. Mohammed Ibrahim Awal. Mia, mi minister. Mia, mi minister. Honorable. Thank you. Thank you, Akusu Abdallah. Nana Chairman, Mr. President, Nana Dudanka Akufuado, Central Regional Minister, MMDCs, members of the party call, Professor Yanka and his team, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, we at the ministry are very much excited about the Pan African Heritage World Museum. We believe that when completed, the museum would add to the cultural and artistic assets of this country. Mr. President, we are working very hard to improve upon our 28 forts and castles and make them attractive to tourists. Honorable Yanka, let me assure you, Mr. President has directed me that we should work with you to ensure the service completion of this project. We will do that. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, over the next two years, between this year and next year, through the return, the Beyond the Return project, we would invite about 1.5 million tourists to this country. 1.5 million tourists to this country over the next two years. And this will generate about $5 billion to Ghana's economy, making tourism the number one contributor to GDP. And we're excited that when this is done, Ghana will be the true headquarters of Pan-Afghanism. I want to assure the Heritage Foundation, everybody, that we at the ministry are very committed to make Ghana the mecca of Pan-Afghanism. Thank you, and good morning. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Policeman, the moment we are waiting for Today is Africa World Heritage Day, and we are more than privileged to have His Excellency, the President of the Land, join us on the Pomazi Hills to give us the keynote address. The President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Ekofo Ado. Eminent clergy, Central Regional Minister, the Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Member of Parliament for Gomwa Central, Municipal Chief Executive for Ifutu Municipal Assembly, Founder, Executive Chairman, and members of the International Board of Trustees of Pan African Heritage World. Chairman and members of the Advisory Board of the Pan-African Heritage World, UNESCO representative, Odefo Amwaku Buedu, the eighth Omahine of Breman traditional area, and the president of the Central Regional House of Chiefs, Ehuna Bubrim, Nanapra Ajinsem the sixth Omahine of Asim Renchi, Nana Apata Kufi the fifth, Udikro of Gomwa Pomaze and the Drantwahine of Gomwa Jumaku traditional area. The Dean and members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished political personalities, and I'm happy to see one of my competitors of 2020, Ivor Greenstreet, here. As also 
the delightful daughter of President Kwame Nkrumah, Samia Nkrumah. Glad to see all of them here today. Residents of Winneba, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. It is good to be back in Winneba and to cut the sword for the construction of the Pan-African Heritage World Museum. The Ghanaian people and their government are grateful for the honor of this museum being sited in Ghana. It will not only benefit all the peoples of the world, but it will also imbibe in us, in all of us, a deep consciousness and understanding of the goals and ideals of Pan-Africanism. It is fitting that today's event is taking place under the chairmanship of a highly respected traditional ruler, Ehunabubri Nana Prajinsim VI, or Mahinevo Asim Rinchi traditional area, Ehunabubri. We thank you for your presence and words of encouragement. We thank also the president of the Central Regional House of Chiefs and other traditional dignitaries for their attendance. Due to the effects of COVID-19, and the restrictions it has imposed on us. I launched virtually the establishment of the project last year on the 21st of September. At that meeting, I emphasized the importance of citing this monument in Ghana. I accepted the offer to make me the first patron of the project. And I, and I pledge my support to make this project a successful one. I'm happy that work on the Heritage Museum is starting today, 5th May, a day which is being commemorated the world over as African Heritage World Day, to celebrate the cultural and natural heritage of Africa. Notably, you'll all agree with me that the choice of the location of the museum, when about this famous fishing coastal town in Ghana, which served as a port town in the olden days, is very apt. I congratulate warmly the brain behind the project, the versatile Ghanaian and African patriot, Kujoyanka, the chairperson and members of the International Board of Trustees, the chairperson and members of the Executive Council, the chairperson and members of the Advisory Board, and all the interna other international and domestic organs of the Pan-African heritage world for working to bring this noble idea to fruition. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth pillar anchoring the Beyond the Return initiative, which has succeeded the hugely successful year of return, is to give unfettered support to Pan-African heritage and innovation with the objective of identifying innovative Pan-African projects. The Pan-African Heritage World Museum project is certainly an innovative Pan-African project, and government is accordingly supporting its development. The precise nature of the support the government will provide is the subject of ongoing discussions between the Executive Council and the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, and its result will be fully publicized. This project could not have come at a better time. There is unprecedented demand for the study of the original contribution of Africans to the growth of world civilization. There is mounting curiosity about the hidden history and cultures of Africans who were transported out of the continent some 400 years ago in some of the most barbaric and barbarous ventures known to human history. And African youths are anxious to know about the role their ancestors played in shaping the world as we know it. I'm glad that when completed, this project will provide education in the museum's galleries for visitors to learn more about the history, cultures, indigenous knowledge and ideals of our ancestors who demonstrated their resolve to protect our environment. I've been reliably informed that there's going to be a section in the museum which will have a palace of African kingdoms. 
Yes, we know about the great kingdoms such as Egypt, Aksum, Sudan, Ghana, Mali, Songhai, Benin, Oyo, Congo, Zulu, and Ashanti. But it would be very beneficial if we saw replicas of all these in the museum for education purposes. Certainly, many will find time to come here and enhance their knowledge from what was learned in high school. Together with the sculpted park of African heroes, it is also gratifying to know that an entire African herbal plant village will be incorporated into this museum complex. I welcome it very strongly, and I will follow closely the educational programs, programs in the museum, which will help improve our appreciation of the natural plants the Almighty has blessed us with on the continent. The time has come for all of us to take our heritage seriously. No one needs to tell us that we have a rich history made up of remarkable achievements in the arts, sciences, and technology. We have so much to learn from our antecedents and from our indigenous knowledge that have stood the test of time and are driving our development in several ways. We have a lot to learn from our past, and we must apply modern technology to bring them center stage in our forward march. The museum will provide a natural residence and resting place for all the looted cultural artifacts of our continent, which are housed in foreign museums and which will be returned to us come what may. The impact of a successful Africa on the image and standing of Africans in the diaspora, of African Americans, and of all her children, sons, and daughters in the Americas and the Caribbean is incontestable. The ties between us are there for all to see. And the African Union has quite properly designated Africa's descendants in the diaspora as its sixth region. In the coming weeks, Newly reconstituted steering and operational committees of the Beyond the Return initiative will be outdoored to ensure that the project is provided with the required impetus to deliver. I'm confident that this museum will become deservedly a legacy of the Year of Return and Beyond the Return projects. I urge you, residents of the area and those particularly in this immediate catchment area, to be mindful of the fact that you will be the ultimate beneficiaries of the project. So please, do not put any impediments in the way of the investors or the contractor. Thousands and thousands of jobs are going to be created by this project, in whose wake significant growth of the local economy is envisaged. There should thus be a cordial relationship amongst all of you. And there's no better person to make sure of this than the Member of Parliament for the area, Honorable Nana Eshia, the Deputy Minister designate for the Interior. It is wholly appropriate that Ghana, which plays such a central role in the evolution of modern, of modern Pan-Africanism, under her historic first leader, Kwame Nkrumah, should play host to this wonderful project. I'm looking forward to its completion. And today, to the day when we shall gather here to commission the Pan-African Heritage World Museum Project. May God bless Mother Africa, her children and descendants, and us all. I thank you for your attention. I now call on an executive council member of the Pan-African World Heritage Museum, Brenda Joyce, to show all of us gratitude. Good afternoon, everyone. To His Excellency, President Akufo Addo, His Majesty Nanapra, Honorables, the Diplomatic Corps, invited guests, foreign delegations, there are many of you here, 
We want to thank you for your support, for being here. We are the worker bees. We are charged by our chairman, Professor Kojo Yanka, to fulfill this promise of this magnificent edifice. And when it stands shining bright in the sun, you'll be able to tell your children and your grandchildren, I was there in the beginning when the first shovel full of sod was turned to make this possible. A magnificent edifice that tells our story, the true way for people of African descent and for all people of goodwill who want to know the truth. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your presence. We thank you. Thank you very much, Brenda. We've come to the end of the first program. We'll continue and do the sword cutting and exhibition. Thank you very much. And now the exhibition. Thank you. 